Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Chiruji, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a senior industrial engineer, and this semester I've been the Agile product design team. So the APD team is a little bit different from all the normal teams that you've seen or will see, will see here tonight, in that we're not given a client to work with. Instead, we're given a, a problem, and we have to ideate and engineer an innovative product to solve that problem. This semester, the APD team was tasked with creating a product that can extract water out of the atmosphere in an attempt to help alleviate global water scarcity as well as compete in a $1.75 million X-Prize competition. We researched and ideated over 20 different potential solutions to this problem, eventually narrowing it down to the Welkin, which I will leave to my team to tell you all about. But if I were to encapsulate everything that I've learned over the course of this semester, it would be these three things. Firstly, not as smart as I thought I was. And this has come from the immensely humbling and honorable experience of leading the four incredibly brilliant individuals about to take the stage. Secondly, creating an economically viable business around the product is really challenging, and our team is exceedingly grateful to the seasoned business groups that make up the staff of ICCW, our mentors, Alyssa Patel, Stephanie Owens, and Dr. Jim Chamberlain, and our, and our wonderful uh, uh, fellow Patrick. And lastly, I realized that in no alternate universe would there be a scenario in which I could have gotten better teammates than Miles, Joe, Zach, and Trent. And so please help me in giving the warmest of welcomes to Team Welkin. So societies grow and thrive because of the individuals who make it. Whether it's someone as influential as Bill Gates or an average hero like a school teacher, the impact that they make in society is determined by their dreams and their passions. But what if the time we all spent in our individual pursuits was instead spent collecting water, and only enough water to get by on your physical needs? That's the case for 4 billion people across the world facing water scarcity. In India alone, over 1 billion people face water scarcity at least one month of the year. And 1 billion is such a large number, it's hard to bad. And while it does sum up the problem, it doesn't do these individuals justice because no one is just enough. Everyone has a story, but sadly their story is often a missed opportunity. And that's because their dreams and their passions, they've been stunted by necessity that we take for granted. That's why Team ABD has set up the semester to try to help solve this growing problem. We've been researching and prototyping the well. It's a water reclamation device with the objective of condensing 2,000 liters of water from the atmosphere every day. Welcome can run off of solar energy, so this will make it a decentralized solution that can be deployed in these regions that we need. The design of our product was inspired by this year's 2017 Water Abundance Experts. India is our chosen market, and we intend to create a business around our product so that we not only provide a consistent source of water, but a reliable service as well. This semester, our team has done thorough research into the problem viable technologies in our target market. We made 150 contacts at the space of the semester with individuals who provide us with necessary information. We've also made five prototypes with several iterations in between each new development. We are grateful for the opportunity to have worked on this project as ICCEW interns this semester. We're excited to share our work with you tonight. Hello, my name is Trenton Turner. I'm a mechanical engineer from Edmond, Oklahoma. My name is Miles Burnett. I'm a mechanical engineer from Diamond Head, Mississippi. My name is Joe Del Santo. I'm a mechanical engineer from Kingston, Pennsylvania. And I'm Zach Sherman. I'm a mechanical and computer engineer from Norman, Oklahoma. And our team is led by Joe Chirinji and mentored by Alyssa Patel, Stephanie Owens, and Jim Chang. And we are team welcome. All right, so there are four major complications causing water scarcity in India. First, due to environmental conditions and a growing demand, water resources are depleting. So what this means is that people are walking, on average, six to 10 miles every day just to get water. Second, there's a lack of infrastructure. Uh, from an interview that we had with someone from India, he told us that people only have access to water every seven to 10 days in the summer. And so what this means is that people are competing for an already limited resource. Third, the water that people drink in rural India is 80% of it is contaminated with fecal matter. And in other areas, it's even worse with arsenic or mercury. And this leads to 1,600 deaths every day. And then last, the people in these living conditions earn about three, four dollars a day. And so they're incapable of escaping from the circumstances in which they live. And so keeping those four points in mind, our team has developed a welcome to help solve this problem. So welcome is going to draw water from the atmosphere. 
And in the atmosphere, there are three quadrillion gallons of water. And this is a large, untapped resource that cannot be depleted. Second, our device is running off of solar energy, so it's decentralized and will not require an existing grid infrastructure to supply its uh, source of water. And then third, our system is going to have an air filtration system, an air filtration system, as well as a filtration system for the water going out of it to keep the water clean. Also, because of the longevity of our device, we'll be able to supply water to these individuals in need at a very cheap cost. And so now that I've given you an overview of the problem, as well as a brief overview of our technology, I'm going to hand it over to Miles to give you a better idea of how it works. Thank you, Trent. So how Trent's introduced the problem and give you a a uh, little bit of an interview or an overview into our technology. I'd like to talk more about what makes the Wellkin work. As you can see, it is a six foot tall cylindrical device that is three feet in diameter. It's composed of five major components. The first of which is the air inlet that pulls in air from the surrounding environment where it can be filtered to eliminate contamination. This air then flows down a series of tubes where it makes contact with the inner cylinder, which is where the actual water collection occurs. Next, we have the TEC core, which is the overall power source of our device. And finally, we have the outer cylinder that redirects the air back up and out into the surrounding environment. So I'd like to talk a little more in detail about the TEC core, since it's really the foundational technology that makes our device operate. It's composed of small modules with three main components. The first of which is a surface for condensation on the interior of these modules, and the exterior has a surface for heat dissipation where we get rid of excess heat. Now in between these two components, we have small devices called thermoelectric coolers, or TEC. These devices are solid state and operate on a fairly simple principle. Essentially, if you input power, they create a temperature gradient that causes one of these devices to become hot and the other to become cold. Now the cold side is where the actual water condensation and collection will occur. This operates very similar to leaving out a cold drink on a hot, humid day and then collecting the condensation that forms on its surface. There's also an aspect of our device that, is, that we believe makes it very special, uh, and this is its patent-pending airflow system. It pulls in air from the surrounding environment, as I mentioned before, where it can be filtered out for any contaminants. It then flows down through this helical pattern that maximizes our overall contact time with the inner cylinder, allowing us to extract the maximum amount of water from the air that we're processing. So instead of get, sending this cold air out into the environment once it's been processed, we've actually repurposed it to allow it to uh, help our device run more efficiently. So this cold air then flows back over the hot side of the TECs, where it can pull away the excess heat and then is sent back out into the surrounding environment as hot air. So to make this design a reality, APD has taken on or has developed a number of prototypes with multiple iterations within each step. We're currently on our fifth overall prototype, and during this process, we've had two major takeaways. The first of which is that active cooling is a requirement for our device to run effectively and efficiently. The second is that the overall surface for condensation is very important to our water or to our device's ability to collect water. So we're currently on our fifth prototype that can produce about 180 milliliters of water uh, every hour. Now this is a small scale device that is designed to mimic what our overall large-scale uh, device is intended to look like. Now that yield, when scaled up to the larger scale device that we're intending to make, is still fairly below our eventual goal of 2,000 liters a day, but we have some ideas on how to address this. The first comes from our prototyping process, where we've learned about the importance of concentrated airflow that allows us to process more air more quickly. The second aspect it was determined after talking with a professor, an engineering professor from Tabata University in Saudi Arabia, who's written a paper on using thermoelectric coolers to condense water from the atmosphere. We determined, uh, through these talks with him, we determined that the need for a self-regulating power system for our device to allow it to operate efficiently and react to its overall uh, weather conditions that are present in its area of operation. So based on all of this, we determined that the overall power requirement for our device is roughly 30 kilowatts. This translates to a solar panel system of about 224 square meters, or roughly half the size of a basketball court. So now that I've introduced you our technology, I'd like to hand it over to Joe to talk more about our market. Thank you, Miles. 
While Team Welcome was developing the technology that Miles just walked you through, they were also deriving a market from the nearly 4 billion people facing severe water scarcity throughout the world. We analyzed these 4 billion people by looking at regions based on the metrics of humidity, water use per person per day, and overall population suffering from water scarcity in that region. And as you can see, India is the clear front runner out of all the regions we analyzed. And it's an 8.4 billion potential market, mostly due to its nearly 1 billion citizens facing severe water scarcity at least one month out of the year. That's nearly 80% of their population. Additionally, through our conversations with school teachers, professionals, and citizens in India, we found out that despite the efforts of nearly 8,000 NGOs and the Indian government, this problem has only been worsening a bit more over recent years. Once we settled on India as our initial market, we decided to get more granular with our initial deployment and tried to target the Odisha province on the southeast coast of India. Odisha has a 25 million citizen population that meets our target demographic for our device. That is, they live in a rural or semi-rural region. They have a yearly income that allows them to purchase water from our device at a mandate set by the World Health Organization and they live in a village which has a population that can be easily served by a number of welkins that we can currently produce with our manufacturing capability at the beginning of our company. Using Indian census data, we've been able to determine that the size of population most likely to, deter most likely to contain our target demographic is between 200 and 2,000 people. And this is great for Odisha because 70% of their population which lives in the village, lives in the village of that size. Some additional points for Odisha is that we've already found a partner willing to use our technology in BSR Consulting, a consulting firm in India that is looking to use our device for its charitable endeavors. Additionally, the high humidity of Odisha as a result of its position on the coast is going to allow our device to operate with a significantly higher efficiency, and the heat waves which plague Odisha in the spring and summer dry up more conventional sources of water like wells, closing businesses and schools for weeks at a time. There aren't many companies that are doing exactly what Welkin is going to do for water supply, but there are several alternative water sources that we've had to consider as competitors if we were going to enter into an Indian market. We've analyzed our ability to compete against these other sources using the metrics of sales cost per liter, sustainability, which characterizes the provider's ability to draw from a source which can't be depleted in the near future, longevity, and dependability, which characterizes the provider's ability to provide clean, access to 24 7 access to clean water. Our device should be able to provide water to the Indian public at a cost of 3 cents per liter in a sustainable, long-lived, and dependable fashion. Our next biggest competitor is going to be conventional wells and uh, groundwater sources, but these are often unsafe and unreliable despite their negligible costs. We'd also be competing against the Indian government, which, we, which our service is going to be superior to because at best, they're only able to offer water to their, they're only able to offer water to the citizens they serve at about one hour every day. Finally, we'll be competing against other NGOs and entrepreneurs operating in India, but they aren't always going to be able to meet our price point, and their purification technology, which most of them rely upon, need a existing water source, which isn't going to be, which won't be able to be relied upon if India continues to industrialize at the rate it currently is. Since we are able to outstrip all the competitors we have identified, we believe we'll be able to enter India with a business model that Zach is now going to walk you through. Thank you, Joe. Team Woken plans to implement our product by integrating it into pre-existing NGOs business models. Currently, NGOs provide water to the consumer at a cost of about 2 to 7 cents per liter. And many already utilize local uh, stakeholders to engineer a long lifetime business plan for their water scarcity endeavors. Team Welkin plans to partner with these NGOs in order to lower their production costs as well as increase their outreach. We plan to cut their costs from the two to seven cents a liter down to only about half a cent per liter and provide 2,000 liters of water per, uh, per day and service 387 individuals per device. We're currently seeking funding from BSR and other large corporations, which are incentivized to invest in our technology because it relies on renewable energy. If they invest in renewable energy, they will be awarded carbon credits, um, allowing to them to pursue many of their industrialized endeavors. We've spoken to 
a consultant at BSR who has met, who's expressed interest in our class. Secondly, we've also uh, identified two potential manufacturers which could bring our product to reality. With an estimated $38,000 unit cost and 5% markup, we believe that, that would yield $2,000 uh, per unit sale to the NGOs and $100 revenue back to the university. With the recent drop in solar energy costs in recent years, uh, five-year solar projections uh, lead us to believe that Odisha alone is capable of housing over 11,000 well units. That means that we would be able to provide a total of 23 million liters per day, servicing over a million individuals and providing $23 million of profit um, to our organization and $1.15 million back to the university. Looking ahead, Team Wilkins plans on focusing on three major areas um, in the coming months. First, we will reaffirm our business model and protect our intellectual property um, through applying, finalizing our provisional patent as well as searching for the suitable NGO uh, partners and seeking that initial funding. Second, we will focus heavily on the design and prototyping aspects um, as we improve our airflow concentration and continue the iterative process um, as we approach the water volume outputs that we're looking for. And lastly, we'll continue competing in the XPRIZE as we, uh, as we submit the design documentation due at the end of this month and attend the team conference in the coming weeks. Lastly, we're going to be looking towards improving device efficiency as we approach the next year whenever the efficiency testing is to come for the XPRIZE. We would like to thank the uh, CCW staff and fellows for their opportunity uh, to work on such a high impact project such as Welkin, and we're excited to see what the future holds. Thank you all for coming tonight, and I will open the floor to questions. Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, the X Prize is something that we went over briefly in the pitch. And uh, so what it is, is an incentivized competition that spurs technological growth for uh, positive change. And the specific X Prize competition that we're competing in is a $1.75 million competition that's challenging people to, or teams, to develop a product that can condense 2,000 liters of water from the atmosphere and be able to sell it at two cents, uh, two cents a liter. How many teams are in the competition? Uh, so the question was how many teams are currently within the competition that we're competing in? Uh, and it's right about 100 right now. Um, so we're one of 100 teams that are competing in this competition. Why did you decide to partner with NGOs instead of the government or some sort of other infrastructure? So the question is why we decided to partner with NGOs as opposed to the government or um, some other organizations in India. And the answer to that is, we saw NGOs, uh, many of them already have pre-existing solutions to this, and uh, certain ones have you know, a diverse set of those. Um, so we saw that being the easiest uh, methods of integrating our product into somewhere that um, could integrate it into their pre-existing business model. Um, does that answer your question? So the first part of the question was, how do we decide on TECs for our specific technologies? Uh, so we looked at a number of different technologies that have been used for water reclamation. Um, we just saw overall lifetime of the device has such a huge impact on our ability to pro uh, provide water at a low cost. And TECs kind of far outstripped uh, many of the other types of technology available for this. Usually, usually dehumidifiers and condenser technologies operate for about eight to 10 years, while TECs can go up to around 20. Um, so that's that's how we uh, ended up deciding on TECs. Um, do you remember the second part of the question? Like just kind of what your competition is doing, or you know, things about better, 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 better. Uh, So I can take the second part of the question, which is what are what are some of our uh, XPRIZE competitors we're going to be looking at? Uh, we analyzed them based on slightly different metrics, uh, utilizing sort of the base cost of um, the device the volume produced per day, how much maintenance was going to, it was going to take, and how much the device depends on the environment it's going to be in, because the XPRIZE solution has to be decentralized. So one of the things we looked at was Talknets, which is sort of characterizing all the passive cooling devices we might encounter. Uh, and the reason why we, uh, though they have real, virtually no maintenance, they're incredibly dependent on the environment they're in and have relatively low yield with a comparable cost to our device. Uh, we'd also be competing with sort of conventional dehumidifier and condenser technology, which is exemplified, it's not shown here, but it's exemplified through a company called WaterJam, which is a really advanced substrate, which they use condenser technology in partner with to produce a really high volume of water. But the uh, cost associated with their device and the maintenance associated with their device make it so ours will be able to operate for a longer time without having to rely on repairs uh, and at a, world, at a slightly lower cost. We also be uh, competing against uh, desiccant systems, uh, which aren't going to be a good, which are really only a good solution when in very specific situations, uh, at, in times when there's really high or really low temperatures, desiccant burbies are a uh, much better solution, and their cost compared to the uh, offering is also significantly higher, so we're going to be able to be the most desiccant solutions as well. We have time for one more question. So, how does this work with less human clients? So, if you get a shipper, the median rate is above 90%, but in other countries, we don't have that level of humidity. So, will this system work in those sorts of environments? Uh, so, the question was, how does uh, essentially, how does the humidity impact the performance of the device and can it work in these lower humidity regions? Uh, it's fairly heavily dependent since it is extracting water from air. If we can only process a certain amount of air, uh, we can only pull. It's, it's all based on the amount of humidity in the device. So the lower humidity will decrease the overall device's performance. So in the more, the uh, kind of overall drier regions, more arid, it, it wouldn't really be feasible for implementation. 